Uh, this next song is um, based on a poem I wrote about my brother. My brother died when I was pretty young. And the uh, words you hear at the front, it's a, a Kaddish by Allen Ginsberg, and they had this on cassette from the 1970s, and so it's from that cassette. People always say that music is the deepest form of art, and I, 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 don't, I don't feel, I feel like storytelling is really what it's about. I can see you through the bathroom door reading classics illustrated to Moby Dick, while old Rabbi Cage rolls on through our tunnels in that gizmo language we have learned. Today it rumbles that different thunder. On Rosh Hashanah it is written, on Yom Kippur it is sealed. Who shall live and who shall die? And sirens wail, like the time you flew off the balcony. The first first shows I ever did, um, when I went to live in Liverpool in 1970, were actually, uh, were actually poetry shows. It's been about four or five years that I literally can't really play it serious piece of music without words. He has a real voice. Not only has he has a voice that comes through his instrument, but he does have a, a voice that comes through his vocabulary, and um, it's, it's quite wonderful. My father played the saxophone, <clears throat> and his life was full of a lot of disappointments. My mother and my brother died when we were young, and his business failed, all this kind of stuff. Then he got Alzheimer's disease. He couldn't really talk, and he could only talk with a saxophone. And we got along great. Sometimes you marry within songs that apparently have universal meaning, something of personal significance, which lends weight to it, so that when you sing it, it moves you more. Our job, our lunatic job as people, is to try to, you know, to articulate yeah. these really uncoat emotional and intellectual ideas through these three-dimensional pathways. He's really had uh, a life. Probably, he's probably had two or three lives. It's a big show, baby. I think you should just give him whatever. I mean, you know, I thought, why not have everybody make it the big show? Go for the whole deal. I wrote all the poems for my master's degree in the subway going to work. And basically, I only write in the subway. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, gonna have a party. I can really look at the world and make some sense of the world that comes from a certain kind of compassion. It has kind of a weird, quasi-religious vibe to it. You know, the heartbreak around me. It's very easy for me to relate that and to sort of see that in other people right now. That's why I do the subway thing. The subway thing was so beautiful like that because I felt that these were my people. I mean, I really felt that. And it's a really beautiful thing. He doesn't hold back. Whatever he does end up doing, he really does wholeheartedly, um, either as an arranger or as a teacher. He loves being in music. There's no other world for, for him. This is it. Black, 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 black. I was teaching at this little elementary school. And Debbie had been working with us. This must have been 1997. She'd already been working, uh, really been on tour with us for three years. I mean, really on tour. Debbie is an amazing character. She's an amazing person. And she was schlepping her own bags on these be trains in, in Europe, you know, for not a lot of money, doing these jazz tours that were real jazz tours. Well, I've always really particularly liked his intonation and his ability to sort of come up with these, uh, these melody lines that are so rich. There we go. The song that he wrote on my last solo album, Paradise, um, it was just so, so beautiful. 
I just set myself on fire. What a thing to do, you say. Yeah, that's it. For a condition of absolute truth through Roy's work is to miss the point. It's music that's both musically rigorous, lyrically rigorous, and slapstick all at the same time. I always felt this need to tell stories. Some just said. Just so long as you sort of make a person think, even if they walk away not realizing what was in a story or a lyric, they'll all of a sudden, you know, come to this thing. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I think we've been dumbed down for long enough. That's what we're about doing now. We're about getting people to sort of listen up, and it's it, it's new times now, you know. Something's definitely shifted. <laughs> <laughs> 